today we're gonna, we're gonna share kind of the wrapping, the conclusion of a series that we've been calling The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. I hope this has been a good series for you as much as it's kind of been a, just a, a processing for us. We've been processing through this for months and a lot of what God has, has done in our hearts has been what we're sharing with you. And so this is kind of like real and raw and hot off the press type of stuff. Uh, it's not, you know, it doesn't maybe always Put, look all put together because we're still navigating through it, processing through it, talking through it. And uh, today we're going to share uh, a, an idea or a thought that is in scripture that we believe is, is probably one of the most overlooked uh, scriptures uh, in the Bible. And, but it's a, it's a way that Jesus lived that we feel is uh, a model to us today. Now, I want to start off today by asking a question. I don't even know if I can sit down. Uh, maybe I can sit down. We'll see. <laughs> I want to start off today by asking a question in here, and, and you don't have to answer it out loud if you don't want to, but you can ask yourself internally what, this, what, this, uh, what your answer is to this, but how many of you would believe that it is wrong to dishonor your mother and father? How many of you believe it's wrong? Shake your hand ahead if you say, yes, that's, that's true, okay? Your mom is looking at you right now. She's in the room just to see if that's the case. Uh, how many of you believe that it is wrong to lie? Yes? How many of you believe that it is wrong to steal? Yes? yes? How many believe it's wrong to kill? Yes? yes? <laughs> How many believe it's wrong to covet? Yes. yes? How many believe it's wrong to worship any other God outside of the one true God? Yes? All right. All right. Here we go. How many of you believe it's wrong to work seven days a week? Yes. yes. Do you know that God put that in with the top 10 list. Yes. One of the 10 commandments, the fourth commandment of scripture is to honor the Sabbath and to keep it holy. We'll read it, we'll read it in, in just a minute, but uh, I know that for many of us, we, we totally believe you should not murder, you should not steal, you should not kill, you should not covet, you should not take the Lord's name in vain, and we would all go, yes, 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 and then God says, oh, and by the way, you should stop one day a week and not work at all, and we go, I don't know. Maybe that's a suggestion, and God says, no, 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 this is a part of the Ten Commandments, and this is where we want to go today. The title of today's message is How to Live 24-6, How to Live 24-6. And uh, our prayer today is that this will hopefully really encourage you and help you maybe even identify why you are, if you are, exhausted and tired and weary. And so we're going to read Exodus chapter 20. And um, my wife has a much better reading voice than I do. So I'm going to let her read Exodus 20. We're going to be in verse 8 and 11. So read that for us, babe. What does it say? Remember to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. For in it six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath and set it apart as holy. So the word Sabbath is a Hebrew word, Shabbat. How many of you have ever heard of Shabbat? Uh, maybe you've heard of, of many Jewish people that celebrate Shabbat. It is, it is literally a word that means to stop, to cease, to rest, to, to pause, to stop working, to stop worrying, to stop wanting. What would it look like if one day a week we stopped working, stopped worrying, and stopped wanting? I wonder how our life would look differently. And if you look at the Ten Commandments, I need you to hear me very closely. Jesus, or God did not give us the Ten Commandments because he was trying to uh, punish us. God was giving us the Ten Commandments because he's trying to protect us. I mean, no, God's not trying to keep you from pleasure. He's just trying to keep you from having heartache. Stealing will create heartache. Healing will create heartache and prison time, okay? There's a lot of things that comes with all of this, and what he's trying to do is he's trying to get us to stop. Now, all right, now I need some complete honesty if you haven't been honest already. How many of you in here would be honest enough to say that you have a hard time stopping? You have a hard time resting. Raise your hand if that is you, if that's you online. Let us know if that's you. Okay, keep it up, keep it up. Look, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Okay, Any, anybody in here maybe doesn't have, looks like everybody's got, this, we're batting 100% today. Okay, so this message might look like it's for all of us. 
Now, why do we have a hard time resting? Why do we have a hard time stopping? I've, I've shared with y'all, you know, times when one of my, my least favorite places to go on vacation is to go to the beach. It's my least favorite place to go. It is her favorite place to go uh, because God is sanctifying me, okay? <laughs> this is his sanctification process. Because she likes to go to the beach and sit in a chair and do nothing, yes. nothing. How many of you are like, I got me, I want some of that. I want some of that, okay, all right. I want to go on a jet ski. Yes. I want to go, I want to go kayaking. I want to go do stuff. I want to, I'm just, it's a part of my nature. It's a part of how I'm wired. I, I have a hard time stopping. I have a hard time resting. I have a hard time. And, and that not only applies to me, I know, in the vacation mode, uh, it also applies to me in life. And I think there's a lot of reasons, and we can get into all of the reasons why we have a hard time stopping and resting. Um, I think we have a hard time telling people no. Mm. I think we have a hard time, we don't want to disappoint people. Um, so we say yes, 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 whether it's to a boss or to a friend um, or to a loved one. Um, I think we like to be needed. I think we like to be needed, so we, we keep working really, really hard. Um, I think we have a hard time detaching from things, specifically detaching from our phones. Our phones are like IVs, like they're connected to us um, at all times. We, we don't want to miss an email. We don't want to miss a phone call. We don't want to miss a, a social media post. We don't want to miss anything like this FOMO, this fear of missing out. So we're always just kind of always in go mode, go mode, go mode, go mode. I mean, some of y'all checked your phone six times and we just started the message. And so we, this is this, this constant like we don't want to miss, we don't want to miss. We're always working, we're always working, we're always working. But it's creating something inside of us. And that's what we want to talk about today is what is that not being able to stop, not being able to rest, what is that doing to us and, and what is God calling us to in this? Well, we talked about that in week one, how we're physically and emotionally and spiritually drained and tired. And Jesus said there is a better way. And in Mark two twenty seven, speaking about the Sabbath, Jesus said, and he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. What we have to understand is to realize that the Sabbath is a gift for us. It was made just for you. And Jesus gave that something for us. But isn't it funny that it's a command and a gift and yet we have to like force ourselves to do it? It's, we should be saying like, I want to rest. I want this way, but we like fight against it. I don't know if that's you, but I know that's definitely been me when we've talked about this. And so uh, we want to give you today three reasons why you should Sabbath. Um, and have a rest. And number one is the Sabbath reminds us that God is our pursuit. Because no matter how much uh, we, uh, no matter how much we see, do, buy, sell, experience, eat, we always want more, right? Like that vacation, it was just, it wasn't, it didn't, it got there, but it didn't fully take us where we wanted. We need another one. We want like more stamps on our passport or we want to see this. Like I want to see everything. So I'm with you in that. But we always want more, more, more. Like you can't open social media or it, TV. We were used to commercials on TV. Now we have social media. Like it's telling you, you like you need, you look at something and you're like, I need that blanket. Like I didn't know I didn't, <laughs> I'm missing out on having this awesome like certain kind of blanket. So it's always, in our face. We always want more. Um, advertising, they just attempt to monetize on our restlessness. It, they see that, they're, and they're making so much money off of it. Buy this, eat this, go here, do this. It's always just uh, an affront to us, no matter where we turn. Um, and I love what Dall Dallas Willard said. It says, desire is infinite, partly because we were made by God, made for God, made to need God, and made to run on God. We can be satisfied only by the one who is infinite, eternal, and able to supply all of our needs. And so real rest isn't found in the pursuit of something, because we'll always want more, right? It's in the pursuit of someone, and that's Jesus. Yeah, so it's, it's not only a pursuit thing of pursuing God, but the Sabbath also is a reminder that God is our provider. He's not, only, he's not only our pursuit, that we're pursuing him with all that we have, but he's also our provider. And we want to read Exodus chapter 16. Um, Exodus 16. And this, by the way, what we read just earlier is Exodus 20. So think about this is before the Ten Commandments. This is before the command. Exodus 16 says this. This is what God said to them. It says, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn. Everybody say it with me. Solemn. Come on, let's say it again. Solemn. Rest. It's a holy what? Sabbath. Sabbath to the Lord. Watch this. So bake what you will bake 
Boil what you will boil, and all that is left over lay aside to be kept till morning. So they laid it aside till the morning, and as Moses commanded them, and it did not stink. There was no worms in it. Moses said, eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, there will be, there's going to be none. There's going to be none there. On the seventh day... Some of the people now, so watch this, went out to gather, but guess what they found? They found none. So this is what what was happening. God was saying, hey, listen, I need you to to bake as much as you can before because you're going to have enough for today and tomorrow. Tomorrow, you're not going to find any. There's not going to be any manna that's going to be there. You're going to take care of what you need for today and tomorrow. And of course, they went out thinking, well, God's not who he says he is. He's not going to do it, even though he's done that so many times. And so now, because they went out and tried to find some, the Lord says to Moses in verse 28, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. And, I, and, and, and as Lindsay just said, this is a gift given to us. With a gift, you get to choose whether you receive it or don't want it. Mm-hmm. But it's crazy that God has to command you and I to take a gift. Take my gift. <laughs> but he says, I have, I have something I want to give to you. And then he goes and says, therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. And so the people rested on the seventh day. Now, um, this, of course, is, is Old Testament stuff. But there are principles that we can take from the Old Testament. And we see that Jesus also celebrated the Sabbath, honored the Sabbath. He, he had his disciples. There were times where he did something opposite of what the Sabbath commanded because he was showing them something that was much bigger than the Sabbath, but he still followed those rules because for him, it was not just a rule. It was a, a way of life. It was, it was a reminder to him that God, of course, is our pursuit, but that God is also our provider. And so he tells them, hey, listen, you're going to go work. Go work hard. Work hard, do what you do. But on that day of rest, don't work. I've got it. I've taken care of it. And now let me just say this, by the way. Work is good. God created us to work before there was ever sin in the world. Before there was a fall of man, God gave Adam and Eve a job. Okay, so he gave them a job and he told them to work. So the work is fine. Now we know that sin cursed the work, but work is fine. You need to work, okay? Everybody listen to me. You need to work. Can God supernaturally provide for you? Yes, he can. But I have very rarely ever seen God just deposit money into my checking account. Like I woke up and like, a God deposit. Look at that, $500. (laughs) Anybody got one of those lately? Like I normally have to work for that. Um, So it's, you need to work. You, You should work. Here's where the lie happens is when you believe though that you are your provider. When you believe that you've got it, you've got to do all of it, and, 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 and you bear the responsibility of taking care of yourself, taking care of everything. And that's what, the, that's what the Israelites are doing. It wasn't wrong that they were working. God told them to work. God told them to take care of these things. But then he said, hey, take a day off because when you stop working, I will work. I'm going to work. I'm going to take care of all of this stuff. And so they chose not to do that. And so he rebukes them and says, no, do this. You need to rest on this day so that your work is good. Your work is great. And, and, and watch this, watch this. Sabbath is a declaration of trust. It's sab- I don't take a Sabbath because all my work is done. I take a Sabbath because even if it's not done, God's got it. Even when I don't have it all, God has got the Sabbath, watch this, is much like the tithe, the tithe. Oh, here's, here's the tithe principle, right? The tithe principle is that if you honor God with 10% of what you, your first 10% that you, you get in, how many of you believe that he can do more with the 90% than you could do with the 100? And you, y'all believe that? 
Okay, that's the tithe principle, right? That God can do more. If I, if I honor him with 10%, God can do more with that 90. He can multiply and do creative things with that 90 than 100% in my hand. Okay, that's the tithe principle. It's exactly the same as the Sabbath principle. The Sabbath principle is the same way. If I can just take one day, uh, if I can honor God in this day, God can do more in the six days than I can do in seven. And if you don't believe for this to be true, let me prove it to you. Actually, you see it right now in our culture. Okay, so in 19, I mean, in 2020, the average U.S. fast food chain um, did about $700,000 in annual revenue. The average fast food, Burger King, uh, Taco Bell, Wendy's, the average one, did about $700,000. The gold standard of fast food restaurants is McDonald's. There's more of them than any other fast food restaurant. Now, I don't know if it's the gold standard of actual food, but it's, hey, billions and billions of hamburgers. They got something going right, okay? Watch this. They did, where we at? We got on there. Two point, the average McDonald's fast food restaurant did $2.6 million a year in 2020, last year. The average one did. But there is one that outpaced them and outdid them more than anybody else. Can anybody guess what it is? Let's uh, throw it up on the screen. The average Chick-fil-A did $7 million a year. Watch this, watch. With 52 less days than McDonald's. 52 less days. Hey, by the way, Sunday is the greatest day for a fast food restaurant to be open. And yet Chick-fil-A said, we are going to honor this command, not only because it honors God, but it blesses our employees to have a time off. Hey, which by the way, they come back on Monday and are more productive than McDonald's that goes seven days a week. So you want, but I'm just telling you right now, when you make a declaration that God is my provider and you do what he says, God has a way of taking care of the things you can't do yourself because everybody's striving her and I got to make the money. I got to make the money. I got to do it. And God says, no, no, no. Six days, make the money, work hard, but you better take a day and give it to me. And not only give it to me, let me give it to you. The Sabbath is not us giving it to him. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. And so the Sabbath is our opportunity to trust that God, you are my provider. God, you, you, you're, you've got this. God, it's all in your hands. So for all of you type A people that are like me that love to work and love to work hard, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you gotta learn to rest and you gotta learn to trust. You gotta learn to trust. Six days, you're worrying about your kids. Take one day off and don't worry about them. <laughs> Be like, I'm sorry, it's the Sabbath. I can't worry about you anymore. I mean, I'm not worrying, I'm not wanting, and I'm not working, okay? <laughs> well, it didn't say don't take care of them. You've got to take care of them, but you don't have to worry about them. <laughs> uh, so, Whichever. I mean, however you interpret that. That's right. no, I'm sorry, I'm it's like, sorry, I'm you don't kidding. get dinner tonight at Sabbath. <laughs> No eating. I'm not working. <laughs> I got to eat. Closed. No, I got to eat. <laughs> we don't miss meals at my house. Um, but another reason that we need Sabbath is that Sabbath reminds us that God is our Savior. And we talked about Exodus, and then we're going to go to Deuteronomy now. And this is when the slaves were out of Egypt, and they're uh, being given the Ten Commandments again and what to focus on. So in Deuteronomy 5, 12 through 15, it says, Observe the Sabbath by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath rest dedicated to the Lord your God. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought you out with a strong and powerful arm. That is why the Lord your God has commanded you to rest on the Sabbath. And again, I know this is Old Testament, but we can get principles from it for sure. And I love that at the beginning in Exodus, the focus was God 
it was pointed to creation. And now in Deuteronomy, it's pointed to liberation, being freed from being slaves. And I love what it says. It says, he tells them in verse 15, remember that you were once slaves. And I think we could do good to put that into our own lives, right? Remember where we came from. Remember what God brought you out of. Remember, we were slaves to ourselves and slaves to the world before we were in Christ. And so um, if you think about it, slaves don't get a day off. They work from sunup to sundown till they die, right? They, because they're in bondage. And many of you can understand what that's like because sometimes you feel slave to your schedule or to work or to doing or to just being and um, appointments are slaves to debt, slaves to our work. And why is that? And I think it's because we believe the lie that our work and our, um, our wealth and other people's words or opinions determine our worth. And it, we're not finding it in God. We're finding it in our work or our... Say that again. Yeah. Say we that believe again. the lie that our work, our wealth, or others' words and opinions determines our worth, yeah. not in God. Hmm. And so... This is proven in a simple thing that we do when we meet somebody new. What is the first thing we say? Oh, hi, I'm Lindsay, what's your name? And what do you do? Not, you know, like, hey, tell me something about yourself. No, we mostly ask, what do you do? Because our culture values doing and being and going and having and acquiring and never having enough. And just like for the slaves in Egypt, they were having to even build storehouses because they were building up more and more and more and more. And just like I know you've talked about before, uh, the store... Uh, storage business, mm -hmm. we have so much storage, we have more stuff than we even have room for. So we're working and working and acquiring, acquiring, and what is that even doing for us, right? Nothing, we're just slaves to our own schedule or um, work. And I know I definitely have bought into that too and, and still can struggle with that. My worth is found in what I do and what I can produce and how much uh, people's thoughts or opinions are about me. But then that's not me finding my identity in God and realizing like he's not after me for what I do, right? He's after me because of who I am. And we're now sons and daughters in Christ, just like they came out of Egypt and out of bondage. We're out of Egypt and out of bondage. And Sabbath is actually like a declaration against culture. This is what culture is saying we should do, be, have more of. I'm gonna work like you were saying, but on this day, I'm going to dedicate it to God and fight against what culture says I should be or do. And so it's just an act of resistance. And so we think in buying and doing and getting, we're going to find contentment. But where has that gotten you, right? Not too far. We're still so discontented. But if we can just turn to Jesus and know, I'll take this day or this time to focus on you and be content with what we already have, not wanting more, taking a day to be like, I don't need anything else. Like, God, I'm gonna fully enjoy who you are, who you made me to be. Um, and that's where we really do find true contentment in what we have and where we are and not needing and striving for more. And I think that'll set us up for the rest of the week. Cause yes, yeah, Sabbath is a day, but you go back to your life and it's busy and it's hectic and it's crazy. I think we always have to keep pulling ourselves back to, I can be content. I have what I need. I have what I need in him. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think just thinking through personally for me, that's probably been, that was one of the most disorienting things when we went on our sabbatical in June and July. For those that maybe don't know that we, you know, we took two months off. So it was like, you know, no work, no emails, no phone calls, no counseling, no funerals, no weddings, no managing our staff, no, like, none of that stuff. And, um, and when all of that stops, you then begin to ask yourself, you have to ask yourself, so who am I? Who am I? Because I hear men all the time, oh, I got to work. I don't know what to do if I don't work. Well, then that means we've put our identity in our work. Who am I out, out, outside of this? And, and, and I know for me, it was always hard to, to rest because in a lot of ways, my identity was tied to being, wanting to be a really good pastor, wanting to be a, a, a really good communicator, wanting to, every time there, that I should be resting, I'm always thinking about I should be calling this person. I should be investing in people. I should be doing this. I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I, should, I shouldn't be doing this. I, I should be, and, and it was just a constant thing. And so for us, it was an intentional like halt, stop, 
and let's, let's rest and find who we are in Christ, um, not just resting from, but resting for what God has for us and what God wants us to do and, and, and ask deeper, deeper questions. I think sometimes we, and I can only speak for myself, but probably maybe some of you would relate, we don't like slowing down and we don't like resting because when I rest, whatever's on the inside rises to the top. And that means I'm gonna have to deal with it. And so if I, keep my loud, if I keep my life loud, and if I keep my life busy, and if I keep my life going, 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 I never have to deal with the inner struggles I have going on on the inside. And so, you know, the sabbatical for me was, so who am I as a, as a first off, a son of God? Who am I as a man of God? Who am I as a husband? Who am I as a, as a, as a father, what God's called me to? And so Sabbath for me is a, is, is a saving from, like I can stop because God, this is your church. God, you will build your church. I don't have to be a functional savior. So if people call and they don't get me, that's okay. Jesus can do the work. Y'all get it? And so, so if you get my voicemail, just go, Jesus, what do you want? No. <laughs> and I yeah, love, I'm just kidding. Yeah, sorry. I no. love that Sabbath, if you were done. Mm-mm, maybe. <laughs> Sabbath breaks us free from the twin taskmasters, ma- taskmasters of accomplishment and accumulation, because that's what our culture is pushing at us, right? So we, we can know to take that time to rest. And I love this that it says, notice that it says that the Lord brought you out. Yeah. He actually even gives us away, right? He's the one who's taken us out. Uh, Jesus didn't give us an instruction manual on how to save, our, save ourselves. He did it. He, he proved something. He did something. He did the work, and he told us that all we have to do is believe it and receive it. Like, why do we fight so hard against it? He's provided it for us. He said, all you have to do is believe it and accept it. And we have good news for you today that apart from Christ, you are a slave. But for those in Christ, as we talked about, you're now a son and a daughter. And you're, you were under the cruel rule of Pharaoh. Now you're under the tender care of your father. Mm-hmm. So stop living like your slaves and start living like your sons and daughters of God. Mm-hmm. And if God rescued you when you were slaves, how much more does he care about you? And he'll take care of you, of you as a son and daughter. So you truly can't stop and rest because knowing he's got it, you're not in control, and he will take care of what needs to be taken care of. Now, I know if you're like me, when, when I started hearing things about this and started learning about Sabbath and started studying about Sabbath, everything within my body was like, there's no way. There's no way. Like, oh, that's nice for you guys, but there's just no way I can do it. There's no way I can take a day off. There's just no way. I mean, have you seen my schedule? I have young kids, I have this, we have sports, we have games, I got work, I got this, I got that. There's just, there's no way that's ever actually possible. And if that's you and you hear, are hearing us and you're feeling that, there's just no way that that can happen. I want you to lean in for a moment because I have a scripture for you. And it's found in Hebrews chapter four and it's in verse nine through 11. And it says, there remains then What is it? A Sabbath rest. Now this is New Testament now, okay? So we're not in Old Testament anymore. This is New Testament. There remains then a Sabbath rest for who? The people of God. God. And I love this. And for (laughs) anyone. Okay, so just in case if you're not a people of God, it's also, we want to make sure it's for anyone who enters God's rest, also rests from their work, just as God did from his, hey, watch this, watch this. God not only mandates rest, he also models it. So he not only tells us this is what you're supposed to do, he showed us how to do it. But then watch the rest of this verse. Here's the rest. So let us, our Savior's church, let us, therefore, make every effort to enter that rest. Watch this, it's crazy. You're going to have to work hard 
to rest. <laughs> Thinking about how contradicting almost that sounds. You're going to have to work hard to rest. Make every effort to enter into that rest. Lindsay and I have learned it takes, it, it takes discipline actually for us to rest. Discipline for me to say, no, I'm not getting on my phone. Discipline to say, no, I'm not saying yes to that appointment. Discipline to saying, no, I'm going to, discipline to saying, yes, I'm going to choose this. It takes some intentionality, it's taken some planning, it's taken some preparation. Um, but I, I just want you to hear us very clearly. You can start somewhere. Well, I work 14 and 14. We don't get a day off. Okay, but the 14 you're in, is any of that time a time where you take off and just say no? Because a lot of guys I know that work offshore, they work offshore, then they come in and they work when they get in. I, I don't know, I got young kids and I don't know how to do this. You can get creative, you can figure things out, you can, listen, it, this isn't so much about a day. I want everybody to listen to me. This isn't so much about a day as it is about us resting in Christ. Mm -hmm. So yes, it'd be great if there's a day where we can pause and do those things that are there, but this is so much more about us just stopping, having times and seasons in our rhythms where we stop, stop worrying, stop wanting, and stop working. Mm -hmm. So we can receive all that God really has to do. And, and according to this, there is a Sabbath rest for God's people, but you are going to have to make every effort to enter into that rest because you live in a world that is broken that says, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep trying, keep working, keep working, keep working, keep working. Yeah. And so you're going to have to, in an act of resistance, go, no, I will not. Hobby Lobby was one of those as well, by the way. You have to act, you have to do a forceful resistance, nope. Could we do this way? Yes. Could we make morning? M make more. Make morning. <laughs> make money? <laughs> Maybe. But it's almost an act of resistance against culture. Hey, by the way, Chick Fil A does open on Sundays. Watch this. I bet you didn't know this. They open on Sundays when there's a crisis. They have opened on Sundays when there's been floods and hurricanes and things to take care of people which is, by the way, when Jesus would break the commandment, when it meant to help other people, when it, when it was meant in a way to be a blessing to those uh, around them. And so you got to make every, every effort. That's good. All right, we're going to wrap it up. I was just, just, just saying about a year or so ago, I heard about this and heard somebody talk about it. And I'm like, there's no way. Like, so if you're there, don't worry. Like it just, I understand it was, it seemed like, no, there's no way we could do this. But in all actuality, we've taken the time to stop and to do that. It is our favorite day of the week and we really do enjoy it because it's just a time to reconnect with God and each other and our family. And um, it's a day that we do some, most of the time feel most connected to God and each other. And it just is stopping us from that striving and we do feel at peace. And I feel like it does, it sets us up for the rest of the week. And I just have a few questions for you to um, ask yourself. It's, I know I am resting in Jesus when I am, and there's just seven of these, so just listen up. Number one, I'm enjoying communion with Jesus, even in seasons of great pressure and disappointment. This is how you know that you are resting in Christ. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. so. um, and number two, experiencing a lack of anxiety in my body. Number three, not doing for others what they can and should do for themselves. That can be a hard one, right? Wait, wait, say that one again. <laughs> Not doing for others what they can and should do for themselves because we feel so many times like we need to be other people's saviors, right? And not let Jesus meet them in there because that whole thing of like, I have, we each have a load to carry. We can't carry someone else's load. You can help carry burdens, but everybody has their own load that they have to carry. And we know we're resting in Jesus when we can say at times, that's for them to handle and we need to let them handle that. And number four, less and less triggered by things going awry. That can be hard, right? Number five, experiencing a deep commitment to care for the people God has entrusted to me. Number six, receiving God's gift of limits rather than fighting, ignoring, or denying them. 
So it's back to trusting in him. And number seven, embracing the season in which God has placed me, which we talked about is contentment. It might not be where I want to be or what's going on, but God, you just, you, we're, we're trusting God and we're, um, we can rest in him even when it's not great around us. And it's not perfect. These aren't like live up to this or you're not. Like we will struggle. We won't get it right, but we can know we're moving in the right direction when we start seeing these things produced in our lives. Mm. So let's end today with where we started. Where we started was Jesus' invitation of Matthew 11. And I want to read it one last time, and then we're going to, we're going to close this, this whole series out and close our service out. But I, I want you to um, just take this in yet again. Everybody listen to me very closely. Jesus does not lead by control, condemnation, guilt, he leads by invitation and example. And he lets us choose if we want to follow in a way that we see that he lives in a way that, man, I, I want that. And so Matthew 11 takes a command, a command, 10 commandments. But, but when you take those commands and then you bring them over to the New Testament, Jesus says, yes, these commandments are still, like everybody in here still believes that killing is wrong. Everybody in here still feels like stealing is wrong, coveting is wrong. That's Old Testament, but when we come into New Testament, yeah. But we know that Jesus takes those and he, he expands them even further. And Jesus shows us that it's not about trying to live up to these 10. Jesus says, it's just about knowing me and when you live for me and know me and follow me, you'll live a life that is submitted to the full joy that I have for you, the full peace that I have for you. If, if you're full of worry and fear and anxiousness and drivenness, and it just shows we're not resting in him. We're resting in self. We're believing that if this situation just gets fixed, then I'll be at rest. Hey, by the way, peace is not about having calm situations. Peace is about having an inner calmness, even in the midst of pressure, disappointment. So you can go through the hardest week of your life and still find rest and peace. Rest is not a vacation at the Bermudas. You can go to the Bermudas and still not have rest of soul. You could have no money and still have rest. And I don't know who I'm speaking to in here or online, but I want Jesus' words to be the invitation today. Verse 28, when he says, come to me, all, who you, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I'm going to give you rest. This is the promise. I'll end with this last statement. And that is that the most mature in Jesus are not those working hardest for him, but those resting best in him. Those most mature in Jesus are not those who are working hard for him. Jesus did not invite you to come and slave drive alongside him. Jesus invited you to come rest in him and work with him. And there is a pace of Christ. There is a way of Christ that brings peace, love, joy, hope, patience, goodness, gentleness, self-control. And if your life is anything outside of those things, then we're not finding our rest in him. And I pray that today, and hopefully throughout this series, has not been a weight that's been put on you. Oh man, I've got to try to, I've, try, I've got to try to have a time of solitude. Like, oh, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to live simply. I've got to like get rid of stuff. I've got to, I've got to. No, no, no. I, I pray this has been an invitation and a gift that God wants you to receive. It says there's a new way. There's a better way of life than the way that you're living. And Jesus models it. 
And then he gives us the Holy Spirit to empower us to live it. So today, if you're here in this room and you say, man, I just, I want to receive, I want to receive that rest, that rest that I find in Christ alone. If that's you, um, I want, we want to pray for you. We also want to pray for those in here that you have not submitted your life to Christ because you'll never find rest in Christ until you submit your life to Christ. And so I want to first pray for those who you have submitted your life to Christ, but if you're being honest, you've kind of taken the wheel, you've done your own thing and lived your own life and and now you're kind of realizing like, man, maybe a lot of my stress is because I've taken, I've, I've taken the wheel back and I need to find what, what real rest looks like for him. And I, I need to do what he says. I, I just need to come to him. I need to come to him. I, I love this because this, the, the only requirement it takes, I need everybody to listen. The only requirement it takes is not for you to do anything other than just come to him. And when you come to him, he takes care of the rest. So Father, right now in this place, for those that are in the room, those that are online right now, that just have found themselves to be restless, God, we thank you for the gift that you have given us the gift of Jesus. God, the Sabbath was, was just a, a, a picture of what was to come when Jesus showed up. And Jesus, we thank you for the gift that you are to us. Now, we want to be a people who rest in you. I pray for all those that are in here that are listening right now, God, that that have maybe had areas of their heart that have been restless. Maybe when they think about their finances, they get restless. Maybe when they think about a, a, a child or, or, or a husband or a family member or a friend, they get restless. Or God, when they think about their future, they get restless. Or God, when they think about all the work that they have to do, they get restless. Or they, they think about the, the, the areas that the enemy wants to bring up of where they're not enough or they're inadequate. They get restless. But God, we thank you that we find our rest in you. We find our peace in you. Now help us. Holy Spirit, would you help us? God, we repent. We repent. We turn to you today. We acknowledge, God, what we have done, what we've taken into our own hands, and we we acknowledge, God, that that we need you. We, We need to find our rest in you. So help us today. With all heads bowed and everybody's eyes still closed those in here that have not submitted your life to Christ you want this rest but if you were being really honest you have not submitted your life to Christ your your life has really been all about you today Jesus offers the greatest gift that any person can ever give you the gift of salvation the gift of a clean slate the gift of forgiveness of sins This isn't something that you can acquire yourself. This isn't something that you can do enough. You can't go to church enough. You can't pray enough. You can't give enough. You can't serve enough. That'll make you right with the Father. This is something that only Jesus can give because he was the only one worthy of paying the ultimate price for it. If you're here and and you say, man, I, I, I need to recognize that Jesus is the only one who can do this. I cast myself before him and I surrender myself to him, my sin, my shame, and my guilt. I give it all to him and I need him to come and give me a fresh start, give me a new heart to forgive me of sin. If that's you that's in this room and say, that's me, man, I, I need that. I want the salvation that he offers. I want you on the count of three to shoot your hands up and say, that's me. One, two, three, if that's you going up all across this room, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in here? Come on, if you're online right now, just let us know. We, that's me. That's me. If that's you, I submit my life to Christ. Thank you over here on the left side. Anybody else? You can put your hands down once you do that. I submit my life to him. I confess that. If you're here, I want you just to pray this right alongside all of, all of our church family. I want you just to pray this with me. We're going to pray this with those who raise their hand as well. We're going to pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, today I submit my life to you. I thank you for sending Jesus to be my substitute. He took my sin and my shame and my guilt on the cross. He was the only one who could pay for it. And he willingly did it because he loved me. And today, I confess my sins, my need for Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, fill me in this moment. Give me a new heart. Help me to surrender my life to you and to follow you every day of my life. Thank you for this free gift. I receive it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, OSC family. We celebrate today.